What's up guys, this is Oscar Lema once again with another review. Today I'm going to be talking about Bring Me the Horizon. They are back with post-human survival horror, which for me it's a new album. I refuse to call it an EP like they're announcing it, since it has only 9 songs. It clocks at 32 minutes, which is short but still long enough to make it an album. For me an EP is less than 7 songs. This record came after following this singles-driven path that they promised to take when they released Ammo back in 2019. They've released three different singles during 2020 and four over the last 12 months. And the great thing is how different these songs are between themselves, but still retain an overall identity that defines this new Bring Me The Horizon sound which is a blend of pop, electronica, and new metal. These gradual shifts in sound have made the band bigger than they've ever been, and they were already pretty mainstream with deathcore and metalcore. But now they have this amazing kind of futuristic concept that has a very prominent visual element to it, so now it's more than just the music. Let's remember that Ammo was a fanbase splitter. I mean, we knew they were getting a little softer and more accessible, but we never expected them to go full pop, right? And that's what they did, with a little heavier parts here and there. The album was really good, but there were some weak points too. Then, they released this super weird experimental EP, which is music to listen to, uh, it's not rock at all, just a lot of electronic, kind of avant-garde gibberish. To me, it's just background music and a bunch of filler. They called it an EP and it was longer than any of their records, but nobody takes it seriously, so it is not considered to be on the band's canon. It should be noted that this new record was co-produced by Mick Gordon, who's a video game composer. He made the soundtrack for video games like Doom and Wolfenstein, so this is why the music feels immersive and cinematic. I mean, it totally gives you that video game vibe. The idea came after the band played Doom Eternal and felt so inspired by the game that they contacted their composer to work on their album. And they say, money can make you happy, huh? <laughs> Making all those dreams come true. This new record opens with Dear Diary, which definitely tells you that this band is heavy again. With Oli screaming at the top of his lungs, this song feels like suicide season all over again for a while. The guitars and drums have this hardcore and even thrash metal kind of vibe blended with industrial and a nice melodic chorus. It is a great opener, but probably wouldn't be a great single. I'm well aware of Oli Sykes' atheism, but I didn't appreciate the blasphemous lyrics in the chorus that could probably shock and offend the religious fans. I hope they don't get too preachy with this thing. Parasite Eve is probably the most cinematic song in the record, uh, with that epic intro that totally feels like a futuristic, apocalyptic video game. It talks about the COVID-19 pandemic in a very apocalyptic manner, the verses have this tension that keeps building up and they feel very industrial. I'm not a fan of that sneeze though, <laughs> but the chorus is very anthemic and the bridge is as heavy as you wanted it to be. So the song is good enough to forgive that sneeze, which was kind of stupid and cheesy, I don't know. <laughs> Teardrops is definitely Linkin Park's Meteora 2.0. This is new metal at its finest. I never thought it was possible to make new metal sound this modern at this point without feeling like a throwback and without blending it with metalcore, gent, or all of these current sounds. This feels like actual old school Linkin Park. And it has like a little three days grace and even some breaking Benjamin sprinkled here and there, but it sounds extremely current at the same time. The melodies are super catchy, the dynamics are great, the screams uh, are also getting closer and closer to Chester Bennington's. He sounds really similar here, and I would definitely love to hear them uh, collab with Mike Shinoda one day, that would be amazing. This is the path the Linkin Park should have taken. 
and this track is definitely one of the highlights from this record. The next song is Obey. Obey is a super catchy song. It's very new metal and industrial at the same time. It is very upbeat and the video is amazing too. Youngblood blended perfectly on this one. So good that you barely notice that there's someone else in the song. His voice doesn't sound too different from Oli's here. It has really catchy melodies, dynamics, hooks. The bridge is great too, it's pretty heavy. Then we have an interlude, which is called Itch for the Cure. And that is definitely a Linkin Park reference to Hybrid Theory. It is an electronic interlude that wouldn't feel out of place in a Linkin Park record. It's really cool. Then we have this super weird song. Then comes uh, King Slayer, which is a collaboration with Baby Metal, this Japanese band, uh, which is a perfect blend of both band styles. It is super heavy and very electronic at the same time. It blends both nu metal, industrial, and kawaii metal, which is Baby Metal's genre. This kind of reminds me of the Pump It Up video games too. It has that weird vibe in a good way. It's super upbeat. It feels like uh, that type of song. All these screams are brutal in here, reminding me of Suicide Season and even Count Your Blessings. And the baby metal singer makes the chorus sound like an anime opening. Maybe cheesy for some, but it works great in here. Bring Me The Horizon have used a lot of anime in their imagery lately. You can definitely tell they must be otakus to some extent. The next song is a collaboration with Nova Twins, which are an upcoming British girl band that blends punk with grime, which is a UK hip hop subgenre that I like a lot. And they even have some Royal Blood influence too. It's pretty dope, you should check them out, definitely. So this song is called One X One and it doesn't really showcase much of the band's actual sound, but their vocal contributions are great. It has a lot of electronic and modern hip-hop elements in it. To be honest, this song sounds 100% like Skillet. And I'm pretty sure nobody else has made this observation before. You can easily imagine John Cooper singing those melodies. And the female vocals but Nova Twins make it feel even more like it since Skillet also has female vocals by their drummer and guitar player. This sounds exactly like them. They've also always had heavy electronica influence since the beginning. So there you go. Skillet must be doing things right in order to be mimicked by such a huge band. Ludens is probably one of the most diverse tracks on this record. It was the first single ever released and it was originally made for the Death Stranding video game soundtrack. It is a very anthemic song that blends alternative rock pop, electronica, nu metal, and industrial. I actually did a dedicated review of this song a year ago, so you can check it out in this channel. The weird thing is that this song is pretty long for a single, and the choruses come pretty late, but it still keeps you interested all the way through. The album closes with One Day, The Only Butterflies Left Will Be In Your Chest As You March Towards Your Death. You heard that right. <laughs> that is the title of the track. Just like the all ridiculously long titles of some emo and deathcore songs back in the 2000s, this is a very unexpected collab with Amy Lee from Evanescence. Amy Lee was actually busy with her new record when she got the offer to collab on this song, and she had to stop everything she was doing in order to make it on the song. She says this is one of her favorite songs she's ever worked in. It kind of feels like an Evanescence track. It feels dark and somber, uh, sad, but it lacks the aggression. It's like a softer Evanescence track. They've also been heavy on Electronica too, so it's nothing we haven't heard before from Evanescence. Oli sounds great on this track. It definitely shows how much his melodic voice has improved over the years. And it is a good song to me, it keeps growing, and it's pretty dark. And it even has some Tim Burton movie vibes uh, towards the end. The weird thing is that this track keeps growing, like building anticipation for a climax that never comes, which may throw some people off. 
but it makes sense in the bigger picture of the album. The artwork is pretty weird, it doesn't fit quite well with the music in my opinion, but I don't know what the hell is going on on their minds. This is supposed to be a part of a new series of EPs and judging by the quality of this first one, it will only get better. This is one of the most innovative records I've heard in years and definitely a new trendsetter. These guys are geniuses of blending everything that's happening right now in modern music and putting it into a heavy rock and metal context that never loses its accessibility. For this revolutionary work, I give it a 9. Trust me, it couldn't get much better than this. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share it with your friends. You can support me on Patreon and PayPal too. And feel free to make any suggestions here in the comments. Don't forget to also follow me on my social media links down in the description. I'm Oscar Lemma, till next time.